Spark plug power. It's the episode that applies to everyone. Well, unless you're a diesel guy, in which case I guess you can be forgiven. Or if you're an EV guy, in which case you're not watching the show. But spark plugs. This is the source of glorious internal combustion. Speaking of that, the spark plug goes all the way back to the mid 1850s. I would say there's probably no automotive part outside the spark plug that has had more different designs all in the hunt of horsepower. And that's what we're gonna do here is look for horsepower. Now, for full disclosure, I gotta tell you, there is a lot about spark plugs we are not gonna be able to test. There's some legitimacy to the fact that some plugs are designed for longevity, like they have a harder electrode. We can't test that here. We can't test reliability as far as like maybe opening up the resistor inside and breaking. We can't do that. We can't test like misfire at really lean part throttle crews. We can't test economy. There's a lot of stuff we can't do. So we will only be looking at power. And I have to be completely honest, I'm guessing that none of these different brands of spark plugs are actually going to make extra horsepower more than any of the other ones. So we're just gonna lay that on the table right now. But we are gonna look at a whole bunch of different types to sort of demonstrate that to you. And we'll have a lot of discussion based on our experience, industry knowledge, and some tips and tricks along the way. Let's look at the spark plugs that we're gonna test. First up is going to be the very basic Autolite spark plug. These are the ones that we buy all the time at the local corner parts store. There's nothing special about them. They're just a good basic spark plug. Moving on to what's in my hand is the NGK Racing Plug. This is the only non-resistor spark plug that we'll be testing. You see, a lot of plugs that started coming out in the late 60s had a resistor in them, which helped cut down on electrical noise so you wouldn't hear that buzzing in your radio. Of course, the resistors are used today so that you don't have frequencies that are getting in trouble with like your EFI and things like that that NGK Racing plug. Once again, the only non-resistor, this is our personal favorite spark plug for running in a performance application. Once we get to running these, we'll give you a lot of tech tips about that spark plug. Next up, you're gonna have the NGK Iridium plugs. There are a ton of brands of spark plugs these days with a center electrode and maybe even a little pad on the ground strap that are made of iridium, platinum, all sorts of different materials. Typically, it's for longevity. We're gonna find out if they make a difference on our engine. Now, when we get into sort of our unusual plug, we're gonna run this Bosch, atypical of the normal Bosch spark plug and made in Russia of all places. That's the one that we say is like this. It has two ground straps on it. That doesn't mean it has two sparks per sparking event, but a lot of people over the years have put multiple ground straps on plugs and there's a lot of theories about how those can work. We're gonna see if that that works in our application. Now, here's the disappointment. We really wanted to run the E3 spark plug. This is probably the most popular specialty plug today, but if you look at it closely, you can see our issue. I bought these spark plugs and we discovered that they are so long that they hit the pistons in our engine. So unfortunately, we're not going to be testing that one in our engine. However, we're gonna run all the rest of these and we're gonna get through it pretty quickly. I think the meat of the episode is going to be in a lot of tips and tricks and we did find something that makes power. And it's not new, but it was a shock. Yeah, I said that. Here's the engine we're gonna use. I wanted something with a little bit of cylinder pressure to give the spark plug some opportunity to show a difference. So this thing has 12 and a quarter to one compression. That's not off the plot in any way, but it's the highest compression engine that we had sitting around here. This is a 478 cubic inch big block Chevy, and this thing should make 800 horsepower, and it should run to 7,500 RPM. Our first spark plug is gonna be the Autolite 3924. Absolutely nothing special about this. Part store standard, I've run them a million million times. The gap right out of the box was 45 thousandths and that's where we left them.
The next thing we're gonna do is take our exact same Autolite 3924 plugs and we're gonna start messing around with the gap. These things are at 45 thousandths right now. That is the airspace in between the ground strap and the center electrode. The interesting thing about spark plugs is that they're designed with the ground strap sort of to match the gap that they expect you're gonna run for the application that the plug is designed for. You can see that the ground strap and the center electrode are pretty much parallel with each other. Now, when we start to change the gap, that's gonna change too. We're gonna stretch these out to 65 thousandths of an inch, which means we're gonna bend this up, which means it's not gonna be parallel anymore, but that's what you get. All right, we'll dyno it, and then we'll come back and run them tight. We're in the process of doing right now is removing all the spark plugs. We're gonna go ahead and change the gap from 65 thousandths where we had it down to 20 thousandths. MSD actually doesn't recommend going anything less than 20 thousandths because it can cause some arcing in the caps and some other problems. So we're gonna go ahead and follow their recommendations and take it to the minimum that we can that they recommend. First of our unconventional plugs, this has two ground straps on it. I don't know what the theory is here because in our opinion, the laws of physics say that electricity jumps to the path of least resistance. So you're not getting two sparks here. Our belief is that there's just one. The part number on these things, FLR8LDCU plus 7404-9. And the first up, the regular old Auto Light, 807.7 horsepower, 609.3 pound feet of torque. When we opened up the gap to 65 thou on the Auto Light, 809.7 horsepower, 611.2 torque. Now we closed up the gap on the Auto Light to 20 thousandths, which delivered 807.9 horsepower and 608 pound feet of torque. I think the thing I learned about the Auto Light is you could just grab them off the shelf and they run pretty good. Yes, absolutely. Next one, we tested the Bosch. Yes. What happens when you put two ground straps on the same plug? You make 803.1 horsepower and 610.6 pound-feet of torque. And the Bosch is now red. And once again, dead overlay, you can't yeah. even see that we pulled up another one. Um, I think we all agree that it's not throwing two sparks per cycle. It's the path of least resistance is where the spark is going. I think it might change, alternate, alternate sure. go back and forth. And I think the plug lasts longer because you've got twice as much material to eat. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, good point. Actually, the reason plugs often don't last is because there's actual metal transfer between the center electrode and the ground strap every time the spark sure. throws. And eventually, you probably pulled plugs out and you can see the buildup on there. Uh, so final conversation about all these plugs that we tested. There's a lot that we didn't run. I mean, obviously there's AC Delco, there's Champion, there's Platinum. You can go on down the list. This cross section tells me that with a great ignition system, with a brand new plug and brand new engine, it just doesn't make a difference. It's, it's almost nothing as far as out of the box spark plugs go. On power. Yeah. But we think there are other reasons to choose some of these plugs, like the Platinum and the Iridium and, and things like that. Longevity, yeah. But then, there's the very last thing, which is what we actually learned. Steve has called up our proof about spark plug gap that we saw with the Autolite plugs. In the black lines here, we've got 45 thousandths gap. In the red, 65 thousandths. And over and over and over, it repeats so that we believe the trend is that the bigger gap made a little bit more power, as you can see. Yeah, I was a non-believer initially. I was like, oh, that's not gonna matter. Well, once it started the flame, it's taken over. But it did it again, yeah. and we didn't believe it, so when, when 
went back and did it with another set of spark plugs yep. and did it, it did it again. So watch this with the <laughs> NGK racing plug. The last thing we tested is opening up the gap to 60 thousandths on our NGK racing plug. And that saw 806.9 horsepower and 609.7 pound feet. Black lines here are gonna be the NGK plug right out of the box. And then in the red lines, we open it up to 60 thousandths. And you can see it's definitely trending better all the way up to, I'm gonna call it 5,800 RPM. And then once again, all the way up at the top. A little peak right there.